Hi guys, it's your science teacher here with another required practical. Uh, this time I'm going to go through enzymes uh, and looking at what pH an enzyme works best at. So I have a solution of starch uh, which is broken down uh, by the enzyme amylase. And you need to know that, you need to know that uh, amylase is specific to starch. And I have a range of different pH buffer solutions. That's going to change the pH of our mixture, and we're going to see uh, what pH the enzyme works best at. And the way we're going to do that is because of the fact when amylase and starch are put together, that makes glucose. I can test for the starch using iodine. And we're going to do that. We're going to put a spot of iodine in each spotting tile. And what we should see is if starch is present, the iodine should turn black. Once the enzyme has broken down the starch, we should see the iodine staying that same colour. You can see it's kind of an orangey colour. Okay, iodine is now in each one of the spotting tiles. My next step is to make them solutions. And I actually have to make them one at a time. Because what I'm going to do is every 10 seconds, I'm going to add some of my solution to the spotting tile. So I can only really do one at a time. I'm gonna measure out using a syringe as well to make it incredibly accurate. So here we go, let's get two milliliters of my amylase. Next step is I need two milliliters of my buffer solution. This is my pH three substance. So it's highly acidic, isn't it? That pH three. And then finally, I'm going to add two centimeters cubed of my starch. And as soon as I've done that, I start my stop clock and I take my first reading. So let's go. Three, two, one. Let's do this. All right, 10 seconds have passed. Let's put that in. Keep stirring, another 10 seconds have passed, let's put another one in. That's my pH uh, 3 solution done, and I'll show you all of the results at the end of my practical. So let's make our pH 5 solution. We're going to make it exactly the same way. Two centimetres cubed of my amylase goes in. Now it's important that I add the buffer next, because as soon as I start adding the starch, the amylase will start breaking it down. Let's do this again. Let's do pH 7 and pH 10 real quickly then.
look at the results now that we collected during this experiment. And each time we go across one box, we go up by 10 seconds. So here I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And this is pH 3. So you can see uh, that there is starch present uh, all the way up until 40, 80, 90, 100, 110 seconds then in this last one the iodine's not changed color and that shows that the starch has been converted to glucose if we go over in ph5 it takes less time uh, for the starch uh, to um, be fully uh, broken down by that enzyme uh, that happens um, after around 20 30 40 50 60 70 70 seconds ph7 look wow that happened really quickly uh, it happened after 10, really, all of the other ones um, showing that there is no starch present. And pH 10, look, uh, starch is present in every single one of them. Uh, that means that the enzyme isn't working very well at pH 10. And we'll explain that then. So as we can see, the optimum pH the enzyme worked best at was pH 7. And if you look online and check, that is the case as well. So this practical clearly worked quite well. pH uh, 5 and P, uh, pH 5 was okay. Uh, pH 10 and pH 3 did not work very well either. That can be due to the fact that the enzyme denatures. That basically means the active site changes uh, at these uh, pHs. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video uh, and looking at this enzyme breaking down uh, starch at different pHs. Remember, if you did like the video, please drop it a like and subscribe to the channel.